This is Candy. She fell in love with Max. He's so cute. <laughs> As an interabled couple, they're no stranger to tough judgment. There was the guy who asked me how much you pay me to oh, be your girlfriend. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. The most invasive questions that people ask are about toileting and sex. But just how far will they go to prove society wrong? It was the hardest thing I've ever had to do in my life. Soul destroying. We met yeah. that typical story of the PA and the disabled person fall in love. It's a classic. You were my year at work, I think, I'm taking notes. When we got together, that's when I started to do yeah. the intimate things. <laughs> <laughs> I have cerebral palsy. I've had it since, since birth. What that means like, on a day-to-day -day basis is that I kind of need help uh, with kind of everything, I, every, every kind of physical thing I do, it hasn't affected my mental capabilities or capacities. It has like completely affected all my physical abilities. I need help with getting out of bed, um, brushing my teeth, helping me to get dressed, uh, feeding me. At first, I didn't want you to do any caring for me. I think you were worried that it would be too much for me and that yeah. that would drive me away if yeah. you said, now you're going to do all of my care and look after me. You can't just assume that someone is comfortable doing all that right from the get-go. Indeed, except I was. One of the concerns that my family had was that caring would be this kind of big thing that would take away from my life and that I wouldn't be able to fulfil my dreams because I'd be spending all of my time caring for Max. That's not how I've ever felt because actually being your carer has allowed me to do lots of things that I never would have had the opportunity to do before. I don't ever resent you for needing care and I don't mm. ever feel like it's too much for me to do or that I don't want to do it. When Candy and Max got together, she was surprised at how openly they were judged in public. People stare a lot. People stare. They're curious. We don't look like an average couple. Max doesn't really notice these things. He's had to deal with it his whole life and so he never really notices people staring. What springs to mind is the thing where they say that I must be super good and angelic to be with you, which right. is, sounds like a compliment, but I don't think that that's actually a very helpful thing to say. People didn't seem shy to make their opinions known. There was the guy who asked me how much you pay me to oh, be your girlfriend. Yes. Yeah. Yes. I think the most invasive questions that people ask are about toileting and sex. And it's, you know, how does he pee and can you do it? I'm a bit mm. like, mind your own beeswax. But then at the same time, <laughs> yeah. yeah, he pees the normal way and yeah, we can. I think online I see more mm. negativity than in person. Yes, yes, exactly. And obviously that's people hiding behind the kind of anonymity of it all. Mm. It was clear that like people were not happy with what they, what they were seeing. In, in India, one of the people in the airport was like, are you two brother and sister? We don't even look. I was like, no, boyfriend, girlfriend. Yeah. And she was like, and then she said, what happened to him? And I was like, Nothing. <laughs> yeah. At first, I was really aware that people were looking at us and if we were kissing or having any kind of public display of affection, that people would be judging, but just more that they would be looking at us. And now, actually, I've noticed that I don't notice. How's that? It's great. It's so tidy. I know. Let's try and keep it like this, shall we? Despite the new relationship that was blossoming at home, Max had a big ambition that could potentially derail their romance. I've always had this dream of like riding up some mountain or horse. I had shared that dream with some friends of mine and, and they thought it was awesome and wanted to help me do that. The plan was to become the first disabled person to trek to Everest Base Camp on horseback. I assumed right from the get-go that Candy would not be interested in coming. He knew it would be a challenge, but wasn't prepared for just how physically and mentally gruelling the expedition would become. Halfway through the trek, I was like, actually, this is horrific. 
There's one day in particular where it was like absolutely hellish. That's a good one. I'm looking like I'm dying. I think that's the second day of Everest. Yeah, we nearly gave up. What made that the hardest day was the horse kicked me four times. It rolled with me on it and it was the day that basically I had to climb like what would have been normally like a, a two, three hour trek for like everyone else and it would turn out into like a six hour trek for me because I was doing so much walking up what seemed like a never ending hill uh, and it was just the most intense, painful, hardest thing I've ever had to do in my life. Like it was soul destroying. From my perspective, I was like, well, I don't want to send him off to, you know, somewhere dangerous and not go and look after him there. Yeah. But with Candy there by his side every step of the way, Max achieved his dream. Thank God you came because I don't think I would have made it without you. That was a big part of how our relationship kind of became serious. Yeah. I'm incredibly proud that we as a team collectively got through all those days that were all incredibly tough. I knew in my heart of hearts that I could do it. It was a world first, mm. nobody had ever done that before. I am incredibly happy to have done what is such a kind of monumental challenge and have completed it. We need more representation of disabled people doing things that people don't expect them to do. Finally, they'd done it. Max had become the first person with cerebral palsy to reach the 17,600 foot elevation of Everest Base Camp. Challenge completed, Max and Candy are now about to embark on their next adventure. My dream wedding was a big wedding in a Tuscan castle. My dream wedding was like a register office and a restaurant. I think we've settled in the middle somewhere, yes. I think. Yeah, we have, um, yeah. Which way do you want to go? Okay, kettle on. Let's do this. With five months till the big day, they have one more arrangement left to consider. Are you going to choose like the flashiest possible suit? I don't think so. They're going to have to measure you really carefully. So I think for most people, they fit the suit thinking that the person's going to be standing up. I think I will need to stand, mm. obviously with help. You don't stand, you sit. That's true. So they need to think about that as well. With a plan in place, it's time to find the perfect suit. Thanks, baby. As you can see, I've already started preparing some yes. here. This is the peak. Yes. Chest. 98 and always 103. You're not symmetrical as a person. Well, nobody is. Should you check the front? The front. The back's clean. The back is clean, yeah. Okay. okay. Alright. With your linen shirt, you look a bit like a pirate. Measurements are done. Thank you, that was really good, guys. Well done. There you go. Thank you, Max. It was lovely having it you. It was today. fantastic. Thanks so much. No, I, uh, I, I thoroughly I enjoyed, enjoyed that. All right. It was amazing. It went super well. Like, by far the best kind of most thorough suit fitting I've ever had. The colours we chose yeah. are going to be really nice. They're really look awesome. Super sharp. Super yeah. fly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> suit sorted. Wedding planned. For Max and Candy, the future looks bright. I think the best thing about our relationship is we just have fun together. We're always just laughing and, and being happy, always sharing each other's experiences. I think it ends up for a much kind of like stronger, more holistic relationship that actually like wears are all really because we're not kind of bound by these societal norms about what you can and can't do. 